Hey everybody, Buzz Miller, Wannabe Studios. Today we're going to talk a little different than normal. We're not going to talk about new licks or, or new technique. We're going to talk a little bit about philosophy, the philosophy of music, the philosophy of what you want in your playing. So often in our world of music, and especially in guitar, we talk in absolutes. And this guitar player kicks this guitar player's butt, and this guy's so much better than this guy, this girl's so much better than this guy. Crazy. First and most importantly, music is not an Olympic event. They don't hand out a gold, a silver, and a bronze. Music is a foreign language to share or to pass the emotion or feeling from me to someone else. And some people do it well, some people do it with a lot of words, some people do it with very few words. You've got David Gilmour can say more with one note than most people can with an entire guitar. But does he have the technique of a John Petrucci for shredding? No. Does that make him better? Does it make him worse? No. It makes him different. Let's understand that we can be different. It doesn't matter if this person has better technique or is in a better band than this person or... Let's just stop all of that. I like this guitarist better because it makes more sense to me, or I like his technique, or I like the way she um, bridges this concept and this concept, or I really like the band they're a part of, and because I like the band they're a part of, I appreciate them more as a musician. Doesn't mean they're better than this person. I just really like that band, or it really speaks to me, or I had a dark time in my life, and this band really just spoke to my heart. Whatever it is, it's not a game. And don't let anyone tell you what you need to be as a musician. If you want to go out and be the greatest guitarist of all times, then that's wonderful. If you want to stay at home and you think it's okay just because you know the intro of four Metallica songs, don't let anyone tell you that's not good enough. You determine what you want, what your expectations are as a musician, as a guitar player, as a band, whatever. And if you think that playing along with a couple of songs is really all you want to be and do, great! That's awesome that you learned those songs and it's awesome that you picked up the guitar and liked at least that much of it. And here's the catch. If you want to go be a guitarist that has accolades and that people love and is part of a band that's really getting traction, whether it's locally or globally, whether you're selling albums to your buddies and some downloads or you're selling worldwide and going to do a worldwide tour next year. If you want to be that next level, let's stop today and let's say, yes, I want to be at that level. Yes, I want to be taken seriously as a guitarist. That's what I want out of my music career or my music goals, then we need to do two things. The first thing, and maybe the most important of them all, you need to learn timing. I've heard people say, oh, I, I don't want to play to a metronome. It, it puts me in a box so I, so I don't feel the music and I don't do swell and, and shrink. Stop. Stop. That's garbage. You learn to do it right. You learn the rule. And once you've learned to do it right, then you know when to play behind the note to gain a lot of drag and feel to that part. Or you can play with a drummer to speed up a little in one section to add a little bit of excitement or, or anger and then pull it back down. If you know the law, then you know when to break the law. I was watching a Guthrie Coven video and I absolutely adored it. He says, I think it might be better if you play the wrong note at the right time than to play the right note at the wrong time. And his idea was, if you don't know when to come down on one, if you don't know that you don't have that beat in your head to play those 16th notes with your palm mutes just right, then, then you're fooling yourself, you're fooling your band, you're fooling your friends to think you're really doing something great. Sit down in front of the television, 
turn on a show, and for 30 minutes you put that metronome on, and you play one riff, and you play it for 30 minutes, and you don't speed it up, and then speed it up and play it two times, and then speed it up. I want to see how fast I can play it. Play with that metronome for 30 minutes on that one television show, and don't change what you're doing. Let that metronome go through the ear. Let it become part of your brain. And then after months of that, it becomes part of your soul. People have lied to you all your life. They've said, practice makes perfect. That's the biggest lie anyone could tell you about rehearsing or about practicing. Practice never made perfect. Practice makes permanent. If you play that part wrong a thousand times, and you play it sloppy, and you play the wrong notes, and, and you don't play it in time, and you practice it a thousand times, when it's time to go play it for real, you're going to play it wrong. Why? Because practice makes permanent. Let's practice correctly. Let's practice properly. So when it's time to get up in front of 50,000 screaming fans, we play it right. When it's time to get in my studio and cut your demo album that's going to be your ticket to superstardom, you play it right. What I would do is I would get something that had a little awkward of a fingering, and I would just 30 minutes on this one television show, I'd play to that one beat. Or... Like I've got some, some little uh, drum machines. I play to a drum machine so it's not that beep, beep, beep that annoyed me. Sound like something that's backing up at a construction site. I hate that. Put on the little drum machine and play to it. Don't change the tempo. Play to it. And then if I get in 20 minutes and there's a commercial on, sometimes I'll turn the, the uh, drum machine off and I'll play for 30, 40 seconds and then turn the drum machine on and see how close to on I am. And that's kind of my test. If I'm dead on and I didn't miss a beat, great, I'm doing good. And I play something simple. So let's say I'm in E minor and I'm going to where the fingering is going to change and become a little creative in the modes. So I'm starting at the seventh fret and I'm gonna go one, three, four and then the next one up is one, three, five. That's kind of a, a weird little fingering change. Then I'm going to slide up and go six, five, three, six, four, two, back to one. So. And then if I do that, 500 times, then I'd go up a little and up a little more, or down a little, or I'd change a string or whatever, but I'd never leave that beat. And then I would push real hard on the downstroke, and then lighter, 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 push hard down. Do something to accent one note above the others, because as we know, not all notes are created equal. Some are more important than others. Learn that in our fills and our solos. But get that metronome from your ear to become part of your brain so it's clicking in your brain and then as you practice 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 it leaves your brain and it becomes part of your soul when you get it there then you've got the law in your heart you know when to break it the second thing learn keys you don't have to learn everything about all of the music theory in the world but know enough to know what key we're in what notes are in that key? What notes are in it pentatonically? What notes are in it um, modally? Why? Again, we learn the law and then we learn when to break it. Once you know the law, then you know if I flat that note when I'm playing this run, it gives it this feel. Or when I play in a dominant, it gives it this feel. Or when I'm playing augmented, it gives it this feel. Learn the laws so you know when you come into my studio and you're playing a blazing solo, you know when you're in key and when you're not. And you're not just because you screwed up and you know this one solo and you play it no matter where your band is on the fretboard. But know why you're playing those notes and know why you're accenting that note and that note. Just learn enough to know why you're playing what you're playing. 
Again, learn the law, then you know when to break the law. People come to me all the time, or I hear them talk, and they go, oh, I don't want to be just brought down by, by knowing all this theory and having to play the notes they tell me to play. No. You know the theory. You know what notes to play when you want the music to do this or this. And it's not always the notes that are in key. Just know the rules. Know the law. Especially if you're just starting out, you're in a band, you're kind of doing some punk stuff because you really haven't gotten to the point where you're getting super progressive. Just know, hey, we're in G minor. Know how to solo in G minor. Know how to fill in G minor. Know how to do some of the bass. These are two things. If you learn now, they're going to pay dividends down the road. So what we're doing is we're building up a bank account. We're building up this bank account that has got all of the little tricks and all the little runs and all the little ideas and all the little techniques that we've learned. And it's got the timing and t the knowledge of when and how to play with timing and the knowledge of when and how to play what notes in what key at what time. All of this we're building up a bank account. And we know the people that are rich have the giant bank accounts. We want to be the guitarist that's rich with a giant bank account. Because when we're in the front of 50,000 screaming fans and we reach down because we're nervous, we reach down in our bank account, we don't want to be bankrupt. We want to be flowing. We want to have so much in that bank account that we reach down and can play things that can even impress ourselves. I love that when I reach down and play something and go, whoa, I even impressed myself on that one. I better hit rewind and watch that one again. We don't want to be bankrupt when it's time to go to the well. We want to be able to have that full. And the things to have it full with, it's great to know the licks. It's great to know all these riffs. It's great to know different fingerings and different little tricks and tapping and all that. But the basis is timing. The basis is is knowing our keys, the basics right there are what we build everything else on. So let's fill our bank account because the bigger we want to be and the more accolades we want and the bigger we want our band to be and the better we want our solo debut album to be is all going to be dependent on everything that we fill that bank account with. Because if we want to go to the next step, that's what we're going to have to be. So let's make the decision today. Let's be that. Let's do the work. Let's practice it right so practice makes permanent. And we have all that permanent in our bank account we can draw on. And again, don't ever let anyone tell you what you want to be. You go be what you want to be. Because the world is out there. Go out and earn it. It ain't easy, but it's worth it in the end. Keep on rocking.